Today's maintenance how-to sounds like an easy one, and it should be. Here's how to remove your rear wheel. So the first method I'm gonna show you, I'm using a bike stand, which does make this job a little bit easier. And the first step is changing the gears all the way down to your highest gear, so the chain is nice and loose. If you've got a Shimano clutch mech, just turn that off, because at the moment, that's just stopping that mech from coming loose. Turn that off. That's gonna help the chain move and get that rear wheel out. If you've got a SRAM mech, you can push the mech forward and then pop that little button. Again, just holds it nice and loose. On this bike, I've got a Maxwell keeping this rear wheel in. The other two options are bolt through, where you might need an Allen key to wind the axle out, or the good old quick release that you just pop and the rear wheel will drop out. To slide this axle out nicely, I'm just holding the rear wheel to keep the rear wheel square in the frame. Also, when the axle comes out, the rear wheel doesn't then just fall out and potentially damage the disc or anything like that. So now it's loose, I keep hold of it. The next step is just to pull on that rear mech and just drop it to the back of the bike slightly, leaving that cassette nice and free to fall out. You see how my disc has now come out of the caliper as well? So let's just sort of unhook the chain the way I am. With your rear wheel out, now just be careful not to pull on the rear brake, because that's gonna move these brake pads and you'll have to reset them and recenter them. Also be very careful dropping your bike onto the rear mech, because that's really vulnerable now. You can end up bending or breaking your mech hanger if you do that. Now to replace the rear wheel, line it up to the rear of your bike, and you need to get the cassette in the loop of this chain. So I'm just gonna pull it down slightly, hook it underneath the cassette, and now try and get the rear wheel in. See how again with the mech, I'm pulling it back slightly so I get the chain around the cassette the right way and pull it up and into the bike. And the next thing I'm looking at is to get my disc in between my brake pads. Might need to just sort of jiggle the rear mech ever slightly and up and away we go. It's now located where it should be. Holding onto my rear wheel like I did on the way out and just threading my axle back through. I might have to wiggle it a little bit and I'm in. So with my max all reinserted, I spin it all the way around and then just clamp it up nice and firmly. You don't have to go too crazy, but keep that rear wheel in nice and tight. Same with the quick release. I know some people like to have their quick releases pointing to the back of the bike so that if they ride through bushes or anything, they're not gonna get hooked and undo. But personally, I've never had a problem with that. So just get that quick release tucked in nice and neatly to the frame. Just time now to turn back on my clutch and I'm ready to roll. More often than not, you have to remove your rear wheel trail side for something like a puncture. So the easiest way of doing that is to flip your bike upside down to get to that rear wheel. There's a few things to think about when you do that. It's especially important to be really careful if you've got a dropper seat post like I have on the top. These levers are really easily damaged if you flip your bike over and they're expensive to replace. So I try to find a little bit of a grassy spot so I can flip the bike over. I'm not gonna damage my levers. I'm also not gonna scratch my grips or brake levers on a gravel car park. I'm just super careful when I do it. So flip the bike over, luckily in the workshop here, I've got this nice little rubber mat and I'm gonna be really careful with that dropper post lever. Okay, so now the same as before, just spin your gears down to that smallest sprocket, makes it much easier to remove the rear wheel. Be careful of any spinning brakes, just gently stop it. I'm gonna get up, turn my clutch off, if you have got one, if you don't have one, don't worry about it, and remove the axle. This time with the axle removed, your wheel should still sit there as it's located in the dropouts. And I'm just gonna pull that mech to the back of the bike to give me that nice route to come out. And there you go, pops up and out and just unhook your chain, away you go. So to replace it, again, pick up that lower sort of portion of the chain, hook it over your cassette. Now I'm gonna pull the mech just to give me that spot to line it up. And again, dropping it in. Now looking at my disc brake rotor to get it in the middle of the pads. There we go. Spinning nice and free. Axle back in, clutch back on, and I'm ready to ride. So there you go, it's a relatively simple job that. Just be careful to shift down to the bottom sprocket to make it easier. And also be careful when you're trying to relocate the disc brake so you don't damage the frame or the brake pads. If you want to see more maintenance videos like this, you can click up there for how to fit a disc brake rotor or click just down the bottom there for how to fit tubeless tires. Just click 
over there to subscribe to GMBN. It's totally free. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment as ever. We love reading them.